I'm Francois Verdugo. Welcome to another episode of Walkabout Adventures. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about batteries. Um, I've spoken to a number of friends and they all had this misconception that if you put 100 amps into a battery, uh, you should be able to get 100 amps out of a battery when you supposedly recharge a battery or charge a battery. Um, batteries don't quite work that way. Um, when you look at batteries and you look at capacitors, they, they both charge or set to charge, but they work, work quite differently. Um, batteries or capacitors, look at capacitors, there's a number of plates, two plates, and you charge the plates and yeah they receive a current, they receive a, a, a charge and yeah and then they discharge. That's called charging the capacitor. Batteries don't quite charge that same way. Batteries are more of a chemical reaction. Um, when you manufacture a battery, you've got your lead plates and then you have your electrolyte, uh, which is usually water and of hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. Uh, when you make it, the battery is fully charged, it's said to be fully charged. Even though they haven't applied a charge to it, it's a chemical reaction that occurs within the lead and the electrolyte that gives you that voltage, the EMF, that voltage to say, okay, I've got a 12 volt battery, 6 volt battery, whatever it may be. You're not really charging the battery, it's an electrical, it's, it's, it's a chemical reaction that occurs within the lead and the acid that produces uh, an EMF or a voltage which then when you apply a circuit, it allows current to flow through. With a capacitor, it's different. They make a capacitor, they got the plates, the manufacturer makes them, when they give them to you, it's dead. There's no charge to it. You have to charge the capacitor in order to be able to receive power back. So capacitors can be charged. Batteries, I prefer to use the term, um, they, they get hydrogen on the plates, so maybe dehydronize the battery. So what happens with the battery is when you start using a battery, um, the current flows through, yes, but also hydrogen forms, little hydrogen bubbles forms on the plate. Those hydrogen bubbles will insulate the lead plate from the electrolyte which causes it or appear for the voltage to drop. Once the voltage drops, we tend to go, the battery is draining or the battery is starting to go flat. But really it isn't, it's more of a chemical reaction. Um, to reverse that or to expel the hydrogen from the plate, we apply a voltage which we say we charge the battery the hydrogen is expelled from the plates which needs to be vented and um, and then we say it's said to be recharging the battery but in reality you're not really recharging a battery you're making the lead plate available or more lead plate surface area available so that the uh, electrolyte can react with the, uh, with the with the lead and get so efficiency denoted by the Greek letter ETA, or probably as the Greek would say ETA. It's a bit of an N with a long tail and a bit of a curve down the bottom. Um, I'll see if I can find some manufacturer's data sheets, or I think I'm going to call it spec sheets or specification sheets, and see if I can find some efficiency levels for new batteries on the market. Um, I don't think they'd be too, too high. They wouldn't be around 100% mark or 90% mark. They might be 60 70% or 80%. Uh, what's important to remember is that as the battery ages, or the more you charge and recharge the battery, uh, some of the lead is lost. It forms a sludge down the bottom of the battery, and that efficiency level will drop. And they, um, so it's important to have reasonably good batteries in the vehicle if you're after good charge. Of, well, we say charge, we'll probably call it, better call it dehydronization of the plates of the battery better than the charge because what you're doing is it's important to remember that what you're doing is expelling the hydrogen off the plates and um, like I said if you put 100 amps in you might get 70 amps or 80 amps out or 60 amps 50 amps depending on the condition of the battery uh, efficiency is key when you're camping if you're driving every day you're touring every day and you got your you're running your battery off your alternator um, then you've got pretty good efficiency for charging your battery because a lot of the current goes straight to your battery. If you're on solar panels, I think about 20, 20, 30 years ago when I was doing electronics, solar panels were about 17% efficiency uh, in terms of converting light energy into electrical energy. The efficiency was about 17%. I think now there might be 18, 19% or 10, 20% thereabouts. That's 30 years on. That's not a huge increase in, in efficiency. 
the solar panels. So it's important that the system that you use, the electrical system you're using the car, when using solar panels is as efficient as possible, both in terms of producing power and using it. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of wonder around my truck and we're going to have a look at this battery setup that I have in my truck. It's something I've done for my purposes. Everybody will be a little bit different. But I'll show you what I've done, how I've set up my solar system, how I've set up my batteries for my own personal use. So let's go for a bit of a wonder. We'll